Hi, I'm Jennifer from Positively Learning. Today we're going to be talking about setting up our paraprofessionals for success. We're going to be diving deep into this paraprofessional training binder. A really quick note. I'm calling this paraprofessional, but you at your school may refer to this position as paraeducators, teacher's aides, teacher's assistants, very similar to like a one-on-one -on -one is what you might also call it in your district. This binder would support all of those positions, even though they may be a little different from school to school. This is intended to support any adults who are working in the resource room setting with you, the special education classroom setting. So what I'd like to do is use this as a unboxing, but instead of unboxing like Amazon delivery or Stitch Fix, we're gonna unbox this training binder. So what we're looking at right now is my Teachers Pay Teachers store where you can purchase the binder. It's also available on my blog, and it is part of this huge special educators resource room bundle that has all the organizational tools to take you from the first day of school to the end. So what I'll do right now is download it, and it downloads as a zip file, and I'll just show you exactly what it looks like when you purchase it. Okay, so you're gonna see these three Files. The first one is a PowerPoint, it says para resource templates. Then we have para resources ready to print, that's a PDF file, and then the start here. So of course we're gonna start here. All right, so this is the big file. This is where everything you need is in one spot. We'll go back to those other ones at the end. All right, so it's 83 pages long and it starts off with a table of contents for paraprofessional training, also known as where do I begin? Where do I even start? I find that confidence is not often that high when working with other adults. And there's lots of reasons for it. But I am here to reassure you, and I'm speaking from experience. I have had some serious ups and downs with paraprofessionals. In my district, um, paraprofessionals were not interviewed or hired by the school. They were contracted through our huge, huge, huge um, district. Like, 10,000 teachers district, we contracted through a service. So people like a paraprofessional would just arrive at your doorstep. And so it was a little bit difficult. And I did struggle with this, which is why I created this binder. Um, but I had found <clears throat> once I had a paraprofessional that did amazing, was like the biggest blessing in the classroom, then I was able to kind of like <laughs> learn more and reflect on the past experiences and where I was kind of equally to blame, like a contributor. And it was basically because I wasn't feeling very confident. I didn't set up my prayer professionals for success. So I learned, and now you can do this before you even start, which is exactly what I want for you. Okay, so page one is a table of contents. Really quickly, um, we are gonna be looking at this huge list of content areas. Now, I don't suggest using them all at once. What I really don't want you to do is don't be me, don't print this, put it in an awesome binder and present it to your paraprofessional. Like what a wonderful gift, I've given you everything you need. So that sounds good, right? Please don't do that. There is more than you need in this binder and you may need it at different times. You may need it when things are going well. You may need some of these pieces or components when things are not going well. You may need some at the beginning of the year. Some can wait till the middle of the year. So the page two is a list of everything included. Page three is probably the most important page and we're gonna go there next. Page three are questions to guide your plan for setting your paraprofessional training up. And by training, I don't mean like a formal training because most of the time we just don't have time to do that. This could be like what we're gonna do to get through the first week of school together as we get to know each other. So I wanna move forward and show you exactly what I mean. Here is the table of contents of all the different content areas that are included in this training. You are not gonna do all of these right now, please do not worry, but they're here for you when you're ready. On the left-hand side, I listed them. Then I put some notes in this binder, ideas to consider. And I have them for almost all of them where they apply. This is the part that I was missing. And I wanted to make sure you had that. I, when I was first working with paraprofessionals and like bombing big time, I went and spent like a lot of money on purchasing paraprofessional binders and they were amazing. They were really, really good. 
However, I didn't know how to use them. <laughs> I just printed them out, put them in a binder. They were beautiful. I didn't know what they meant. No one knew what they meant. I mean, it just, I, I learned, but it was after the fact. So I have put a lot of extra notes in here for you to use or not. If you are very experienced and you just want to get like a refresh, you want to get forms that are really going to work for you, I've got you covered there too. But if you're a little bit newer or your experiences haven't been so great, those ideas to consider are for you. And then some of them are just ready to go in print and some of them have templates. So that's why I made this list. So I suggest printing this out and using this as a checklist as you go through. The next page is also the most important page. I would print this out as well. These are questions to ask yourself as you're going through this content so that you can decide if you really need this or not. I would love to streamline the process. I, if you used half this binder or a third of this binder for the first day of school, I think yeah, you'd be set up really well. And then as you get to know each other, you're adding a few more of these extra components. This list of questions are going to help you decide which ones are just like top priority, which ones can wait um, until a situation. And not a bad situation. <laughs> Okay, and then I have some calendars to set you up like on when you're going to set these things up. This is like for you, not for them, to get yourself organized. Okay, starting off with the first content piece is how we're going to welcome our paraprofessionals. Yeah, if you're just going to say, welcome, I'm glad you're here because you already know them, you can skip this part. But if this is something that where you're nervous, Here's a lot of ideas on what you can do to help them feel like part of the community, which is going to benefit your students, benefit themselves, and benefit you as well. And like how you can help them be successful at your school, because it's not just your classroom. Your whole school is a community, and there's just some suggestions um, that would be able to help them do their very best. And here's a little bit more continued. And then I did put a welcome letter in here and an option to make it your own to edit it, a confidentiality statement and a way to edit that. Professional expectations, I have them listed on the next page, but here's considerations. Um, this is one that's a little bit tricky because I think that we either like overdo it or underdo it. Like if we don't communicate expectations and then we feel frustrated when they're not being met, or we give a list of like 101 expectations. So I listed what I would think that I what I would think you'd want to consider communicating, whether you're communicating formally or informally. Like what does arrival procedures look like? It does not look like drive through in one hand, coffee, phone, you know, it doesn't look like that, obviously. But having it in writing is just gonna make it so much more comfortable. All right, so here's what I would consider when you're getting ready to communicate expectations and then you can just pick and choose and list them on here. Safety procedures, um, here's what we have. We refer to our school guide or your district might have that. And so you can just cut and paste them into here. Instructional strategies, some different ideas. And then they can, here's a template that you can make a menu of different strategies to show them. Maybe you're starting off with one or two, maybe asking what they already know, adding that and then adding a new one in there. Same thing with behavioral strategies. Here's all the suggestions I would give, but that's up to you and your classroom, your students and everybody's experience. And here's the menu for that. Crisis response, de-escalation procedures and response protocols. A little bit of explanation of what that looks like and how I used them with an example. And then here's where I would be cutting and pasting the crisis response the escalation strategies, and then here's a template for the response protocol. That's like, if this happens, then we do this. You may not need this for all of your students. I've worked with some students that really benefited from having this communicated. It benefited the child and it benefited the staff that was working with them. I also used to this like when my um, students would move anywhere in the school building, like lunch, whether they were working with a different staff member for like music or art or something like that. So that's really helpful. Contact lists that are available. Here's an example and a way to make it your own. Prompt hierarchy in color and in, um, let me back up a little bit, a little bit of an explanation of it in color and in black and white. Classroom duties. Now, I put a list of chart, a list of 
common ones from the very beginning of the day to the very end, arrival to dismissal, and then what that could look like. So you're welcome just to borrow these, but I imagine your classroom's a little bit different. So you can just do exactly what I just did, cutting and pasting or typing it in here, putting the explanation, or maybe you just don't need that explanation. You just want to list the um, actions you'd like to see. Data collection. Here's the considerations. I've worked with paraprofessionals that have never collected data ever and did not want to, did not feel comfortable. I also have worked with um, paraprofessionals that were collecting data and it was amazing. It was wonderful. So here's some considerations to decide what it's going to look like in your classroom. And then some pretty basic data sheets, a couple of different formats for you, and communication logs, um, when we use them, how we use them, an example of what we use, and an IEP snapshot. So uh, we used, um, it was a statewide system and it was archaic. And our snapshots were printed out with every IEP, which was awesome, but they were like an eight point font and very difficult to read. So as a special educator who's read hundreds of them, I would just go into a highlighter and it'd be fine. That's not always as easy for other people who are not as used to them. So I do have some recommendations of what you can pull out and share so that everybody's on the same page. I also have another option for a IEP snapshot in the larger bundle, the special educators resource room. Paraprofessional survey. So this is getting to know our paraprofessionals. And this is both personal, like what's your favorite snack? Because I know if I walked in and saw K-Cups waiting for me, I'd be pretty excited. Um, but it's also professional survey. Like what do you feel comfortable doing? Do you love data collection? Do you not want to ever get in your math? You know, obviously we can't always control everything that goes on, but wouldn't it be great to know? Um, I had a one paraprofessional who was a educator and she pulled small groups. She pulled small groups. How awesome is that? Like, what if I would, what if I did not take the time to get to know her? What a, um, what a loss that would have been for the classroom. So here's some really fun formats to get to know you and including some of the professional questions. Paraprofessional evaluations. I know that we're not all going to be in a position, in an evaluative position, but if you are, and especially if it's like your first time doing this, here's lots of suggestions of how to make that the most comfortable for everybody involved. Here is that they've read it. This is like some, a documentation paper that you can use, another one-page option. The next part is classroom areas. Like, what's the name of the area? The purpose? What happens in this? What's the duties? Who's responsible for this area? What types of materials are you going to see then? This is like areas like the classroom library, um, a chill zone, definitely like explaining what exactly that looks like. It's not a place for punishment. Like, it's not a timeout, you know, and how is this used? This cannot be assumed just by walking around the classroom and going, there's where we do centers, there's the chill out zone, there's no, it has to be communicated so that everybody's using it the same way and our students aren't getting mixed messages. Classroom routines, um, it's some ideas on how to communicate them, how to set them up. What I like about this also is that this is like making sure you have everything ready for your students as well as the adults. It's kind of like a check and balance, check balance point. Is that how it's referred to? All right, and so here's an example and I'm using the chill zone. Student expectations. I really like this because I have worked with paraprofessionals that were not meeting like professional expectations. And there I was like kind of brand new at this and not really communicating, kind of feeling like conflicted. And so I now know to go heavy on what we expect from students and I'm modeling it as well. And so it would be really hopefully uncomfortable to not meet those expectations when everybody else is. I don't know if I explained that well, but I do take the time to really stress this. And then of course, I've also worked with some paraprofessionals that were doing things with students and like either not holding up them up to expectations or like their expectations were just not aligned to what we were supposed to be doing. So this is very important. Please don't skip this or assume. I put an example of a student expectation, but of course your school might have like a school motto that everybody, you know, character traits that everybody strives for. 
schedules and calendars. There's lots of considerations, especially if somebody's absent. Like if I'm not here, what happens? Here's plan B. Um, if you're not here, what happens? Or if you have several staff members, something to really think through before it happens. And sensory considerations. I also put a cheat sheet in here that's great for everybody to read. And if you want to modify it and customize it for yourself. And then I put some more reference pages that would be really helpful. Up until now, these are really great content pieces to share with a paraprofessional. You may not want to share them all at once, but you can pick and choose. And then I would put a divider page and put that sensory list. You can put these, the disability categories, like a cheat sheet, the disabilities categories. There's a second format where they can write in examples um, or just use this one. And then I put in the acronym pages, a couple different formats of those. Are in there. And then here's some more considerations. <laughs> um, here's some more considerations that I would think that you'd really want to think about before you wrap up like what the welcoming is going to look like in your classroom. And then some notes that you can like use or use that checklist that we had made at the very beginning. This one just gives you a little bit more room. And then the last few pages are all about organization. Some suggestions of how to put them together, some covers, and some spines. So that is it. It's a lot. But again, you're not going to be using this all at one time. You might want to have some of it ready before you meet. And then like the first week, add one component. That could be like a five minute look at this, five minute look at this. Or you might want to print out the whole binder and put like divider slots in there and then just move that divider as you go through the different components. I would not be like, read these 80 pages and let me know if you have any questions. That is not what I would suggest doing at all. All right, back to that zip file. I just wanted to show you very quickly. The first one is the PowerPoint um, of the templates. And it's not all of the templates. You can refer to this checklist to see which ones are included. But what's nice about these is that they just, you can click and edit them and type them in. You're welcome to change the font too if you want. But that's what that file is. Those are directly from the big file we looked at together. And so are these. These are also from the big file, but these are just like the quick print ones. Before I was doing all of the consideration pages of how to use them, this is, packet is the exact same thing, but I took the consideration pages out so that when you walk over to the printer, you can just print the packet. It's ready to go. The consideration pages you can just keep digitally or to read on your own. So that's why I put that one in there. All right, let me click out of this and this. All right, so please let me know if you have any questions. I want you to feel confident you can do this. Paraprofessionals can be a magical asset to the classroom and they can become really good friends as well. Um, not every situation is gonna be ideal and wonderful, but I have some suggestions in here to hopefully um, prevent a lot of things that could happen and problem solve as well. So I hope that you enjoy it. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'd be happy to jump back on and talk through them. I'm also gonna be linking up a blog post um, about the paraprofessional, the same binder, but you can just read through it and get some more details. So I will link the binder and I'll link the blog post. And then I'll also link the large bundle that has all the organizational tools that you need. All right. Thanks so much for sticking with me for this long video and best of luck.